Welcome to Money Making Conversations. I am your host, Rashawn McDonald. It is important to understand that everybody travels a different path to success. That's because your brand is different. The challenges you face in your life are different. So guess what? You need to stop reading other people's success stories and really start writing your own. Now, you can be motivated by their success. I'm never going to take that away. Read their stories, but it's their stories. So please understand that you have to create your own story through your planning, your effort, and your ability to achieve your own level of success through your commitment. My guests I bring on the show is all about commitments, all about effort and about their success stories. And sometimes in the success story, they stub a toe. And I want to hear those stories because we all need to know that it's never a clean path to success. My next guest has had a clean path to success. She is one of my favorite people. Her name is Kyla Pratt. Kyla has crafted longevity as an actress since starting her career as a young age, at a young age and amassed success in numerous comedies from TV sitcoms to film. She will be reprising her role in The Proud Family. What about Favorite animated show in a reboot, The Proud Family, Louder and Prouder for Disney Plus. I believe it's coming out this year. We'll talk about that. She is currently a uh, star on Fox it's the, in a role called Randy and a Fox series called Call Me Cat. You can catch it every Thursday night on Fox. Please welcome to Money Making Conversations for the very first time. Kyla Platt. <laughs> well, well, you're, looking, you're looking groovy. Is that kind of old? Groovy. Is it groovy? I'm groovy. I'm like groovy. That's cool. <laughs> Good. Well, you, first of all, you look fantastic. And because um, in this television age, that we, you look like, I'm serious. You look like you can probably still play a, a young teenager. You look fantastic, Kyla. I get that a lot. Thank you. So, <laughs> it's crazy. So, so I that's a around with my kids really, who are getting that's older. That's a compliment and you want in Hollywood. Because, <laughs> you, you know, because we got to battle, you know, because it's a, it's an industry about the youth and your ability to maintain, you know, it's like I always tell people, people say, you look good for your age when they say to me, then I stand next to somebody like you, they go, you her dad or your grandpa? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but you look fantastic. Anything you're doing because you've been locked down on COVID to keep your spirits up and keep physically motivated? Um, it's been difficult. Um, actually, when everything started happening, I was actually uh, supposed to shoot the pilot for Call Me Cat. And they called and they were like, um, everything's been shut down. Um, right. The first couple of months was really, really hard. Of mm -hmm. course, staying on top of your eating because um, I'm, I'm an emotional eater <laughs> and I like food. But um, after like a couple of months, you know, I kind of had to, you know, get it together and say, OK, what am I putting in my body? I'm also not exercising as much. I'm also not getting a lot of vitamin D. Um, I want to make sure that I'm healthy just in case, right. you know, I come in contact with anything COVID like so I can fight it off. And I just wanted to start putting better things in my body and and started getting physically active again and just making sure I wasn't laying down and chilling all day. You know, some days you got to do that, but then <laughs> you got to get yourself back on some type of schedule where it's like, all right, don't. Don't fall off too hard because it's going. Right. Everything's going to open right. up, and then what you you're gonna be looking crazy. <laughs> well, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. I gained weight too. I I really did gain weight. I was like, my wife, she was, you you hungry? Yeah, you hungry? <laughs> yeah. And I was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I never do that. So, but guess what? I was sitting around the house watching TV, watching Tiger King, all the stuff, you know, you know, just different shows on Fox, ABC, everything, you know, because COVID had put me in a lifestyle I had never done in my face. I couldn't control my movements. And so yeah. uncertainty. And so we all trapped into that. And so, you know, you know, I'm not saying I was depressed, but I was in a way um, confused about when I went out in public. How do I interact properly? And and then I read the stories. I'm assuming you're based in California. And California yeah. is like the COVID capital of the world right now, you know, with the with the recent surge and productions being shut down and things like that. How do you like you say, you know, taking vitamins and watching what you eat, but you still live in that lifestyle. Is the media overextending the story or you or you can live a comfortable you you move about comfortably in LA? Um, no, I'm, I, as soon as you tell, I don't like being too close to people anyway. I like my space. Uh, I, I had, it's funny. I went to the grocery store and I had this shirt on that said, back up. If you can read this, you're too close. And somebody was like, where'd you get that shirt? And I was like, oh, I've had this shirt for about five years. This had nothing to do with the pandemic. <laughs> um, but no, I, like, I like to, you know, I like a little distance. I like personal space. And I know a lot of people right. don't understand that. I also, um, I do abide by rules and I do think that safety is very important. Mm -hmm. um, if, if someone needs me to wear a mask, if we think that masks are protecting us in some way, of course, I'm going to do what I need to do. Thank you. Um, I have um, 
older relatives. I have young children. Um, I believe in, you know, making sure that we're not spreading this thing even further. I think it's kind of crazy that people are still um, moving just any way that they want to and um, not thinking about others. Um, sometimes you got to you got to do what you got to do. But if you right. just don't want to sit in the house because I, I really feel like this time really um, I was talking to my mom about it this morning, how it, it forced a lot of us to slow down and mm-hmm. focus on things that we weren't really focusing on. And um, this was a time to do that. And uh, we all went through different emotions of how to do it. But a lot of people, you know, don't want to work on themselves. So they don't mm-hmm. want to sit at home with themselves mm-hmm. <laughs> and right. try to figure out, okay, what do, what can I do to better me? You know, they mm-hmm. like, no, I want to do this. And I want to do that, having tantrums and stuff. Um, but I, I really took the time to, to work on me and things that I needed to get in order in my life. Um, mentally, physically, uh, mentally, physically, um, everywhere, you know, every mm-hmm. aspect and just, um, focus on that. But no, we're not, we're not new, moving like normal coming from his household. <laughs> we, we like, what? Oh, excuse me. Drop it off right there. Thank you. <laughs> where, 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 you where you're doing a show. I'm assuming you're, you like, say so you taped the pilot coming out of COVID yes. taping the series. How is the set, you know, because you still gotta be funny. You still gotta be comfortable with everybody around. It is a comedy. And so, you know, I know my background on they do the you do a table read with every script. Do they do a table read? They do it via Zoom or do it do it live with your table read? Uh, well now we shot the pilot during the pandemic and we're we're still shooting the series right now. Right. Um, they have all these extra rules, everything that's put in place. So I basically get hair and makeup done and have to put a mask and a shield back on my face. So it's mm-hmm. constant touch-ups. Um, but for table reads right now, we do Zoom table reads. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of producers. There's a lot of writers that we haven't even met yet in person. Um, they've just been watching us on the cameras. And um, it's, it's weird. Um, but of course, the, the only time that we're able to be around each other is when we're shooting and when we're rehearsing. And uh, you would it, it's weird sometimes because we'll we'll be next to you. We'll, they'll be like, no, you guys need to be closer together for the shot. And we're like, oh, I can I can be close to the. OK, I can. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, with us actors, if you if you do, if you have to be closer, you have to kiss or you have to hug um, You're extra tested that week. Um, I've had days where I've been um, I've had to do three tests in one day. Um, wow. Just to make sure that we keep us safe and our uh, crew safe. And um, yeah, so it, it's been weird because you're kind of trying to develop these characters when you can't really relax. <laughs> right. So um, I think that's why a lot of us were a little anxious with the show coming on because we're like, how did this happen? Like, I hope everything went great because everything's moving kind of crazy on set, but um, I'm happy with it. I watched it last night and I enjoyed it so much. Oh yeah, I I enjoyed it. And you know, like I said, uh, now are you the tallest person on the show now? That's what I I gotta ask that. Uh, I I am a very, um, you know, short lady. Uh, (laughs) And usually I am the shortest, but um, I think Mayim and I are around the the same height and uh, Leslie's shorter than I am. Um, but way I, short, I always, way short. I always have heels on, so it looks like I'm way taller than them when I'm not. <laughs> but, but you carry your newfound height well, okay? Because because I because you know I, I, I've seen the pilot and I was very entertained by it, and and you you're such a natural, Kyla, in in this op, this new opportunity to be on television in a sitcom on Fox Network. What, 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 tell us everybody about your character, which is named Randy. The series is called Call Me Cat. If you have not seen it, it comes with every Thursday night on Fox. Please tell us about it. Well, Call Me Cat is a show based on a show from the UK called Miranda. Mm-hmm. Um, my character's name on the show is Randy, and she is the barista in Cat's Cat Cafe who mm-hmm. is young, vibrant, tells it like it is, tells you even if you don't want to hear it, she's going to let you know. Um, but she's the life of every party. And um, yeah, it's a show about a, a woman, a cat played by Maya Bialik, who is 39, unmarried, doesn't have any kids. And finally, something happened in her life where she was just like, I need to make a change and I don't want to work as a math professor. This is not fulfilling for me. And she just dropped everything that everybody said that she needed to be doing and Mm -hmm. decided to live her dream. And so now you guys get to watch her live her dream along with two crazy 
sidekicks who work in the shop with her and and uh, we have more characters at our at our bar next door, Middle C, uh, played by Julian Gant and Cheyenne Jackson. And mm-hmm. we're just we're having fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> OK, I, I assume as the series go along, we'll learn more about your characters. Right now, I'm seeing you as a very beautiful, very um, opinionated, not really into cats, <laughs> but you work in a cat place. Which is which is hilarious. A woman who doesn't really like cats, but she's working in a cat cafe. Um, right. <laughs> then you know, Randy got to make her money. She got to figure Absolutely. it out. <laughs> I'm not running from it. I'm just letting everybody know how crazy this character is. And let's talk about my favorite man. He's a he's a star on um, social media. Leslie Jordan. He's about to he's about knee yeah. high. He's he, he he's taller than he can duck on tattoo. Okay, but he can't dunk on Kyla Pratt. That's how short he is. <laughs> no, Leslie is hilarious. I remember going into the writer's room and they said, we cast Phil's character. Um, he's amazing. You have to look at his Instagram. It's the cutest, funniest thing ever. And I said, let me see. And they showed me one thing. And I was like, oh, my goodness, he's hilarious. I have to follow him. Literally two weeks later is when he went viral. Like right. he became everybody's, you know, go to during the pandemic. And when I mm-hmm. tell you this man is so sweet and so hilarious, like you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. Like what he gives you guys on Instagram, that is his every day. He is amazing. He really is amazing. And so I'm just tell you what she's talking about. I think he went from like a half a million Instagram followers to like five million during the oh, no, pandemic. He- I think he was less than that. I think he yes. was. I think he was even lower than half a million. Yeah, because I, I, I know it's a real low number. I didn't want to like go below what it could have been. Yeah. But it's an amazing low number. And if you go to his Instagram account, he dances. He if, let's give a little background. He he does a lot of voiceover work, and which we're going to get to in a minute because of your animated reboot on Disney Plus. Because and so a lot of people don't know him, but they've heard him, and so to see him kind of playing out these little character playoffs and stuff on TikTok and all these different platforms. He's made for social media and he's fun and he's an older guy that's very hip, very topical, yeah. very, uh, you know, if, if I had to compare him to somebody like that, I would say a Dick Van Dyke type because he he doesn't act his age and he's very relatable. And you have to be able to sit with him. He's not at all. He, he is a big old kid. He eats all the props on the set. I'm like, you not, we need that for the right, next right. take. He's like, they got right. some more. He is <laughs> hilarious. He's been in this game for so long and acting for so long. And I think it's amazing that something like Instagram has now shown the world who this man really is. And he is absolutely hilarious. Like I, I like half the stuff that comes out of his mouth. We, we, you, I don't even know how he's on Fox. Because he just like it, anything that comes to his brain, mm-hmm. it's just out. It just yeah. and I'm like, let's you can't say that. <laughs> but he like he's the sweetest, and he has so many great things coming his way um, because of because of Instagram, and then and then seeing the things that he does and the the joy that he brings to everyone who follows him. It's like that's what we all needed, you know. So he he just he exploded at the right time. We needed him. He helped through. He helped so many people through this. Yeah, here's a fun part about. Um your show. Cause you know, we all, you know, Hollywood, you know, you get a show, you audition and they don't get a call back. And then you get a show where the star of the show comes from a, an incredibly hit, a hit series called the big bang theory. One of the executive mm-hmm. producers is from the big bang theory. And now you get to be a part of a show on Fox television. Tell us about the, that emotional, you got it. And the relationship that you built on the show with your uh, leading lady who is uh, Emmy nominated from the Big Bang Theory. Well, what's crazy is that um, this project came to me um, from the creator of the show, who's also producing uh, Darlene Hunt. I worked with her previously and um, she's like, I need you to come in. I need you to test for this. And um, I heard that, you know, Maya was a part of it and Jim Parsons was a part of it. And um, just to even get the opportunity to be in the same room as people that, you know, you can learn from. Um, was an amazing this thought of right. the possibility of being able to do that mm-hmm. and then to actually be able to become a part of the show and work with these people mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. when I tell you did not disappoint in any type of way Mayam is literally like literally does everything and she's so sweet and gracious and a human being 
and to, to, you know, I've been in this business for a very long time yes. and I've worked so much and there's not a lot of times where I come across people where I'm like, okay, I have to watch everything this person is doing because she is doing ev- like she's doing everything and she's doing it great. So, right. you know, I just, I'm, I feel so blessed to be a part of a situation with people who have worked so successfully for so long, but are also mm-hmm. amazing human beings that show that, you know, you don't have to be crazy <laughs> right. to make things work. I mean, you got to be a little crazy, but uh, but the good crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you're crazy, Penny Proud. Okay, Penny Proud. <laughs> did you think it would come back? Um, I didn't. I I didn't think. Uh, a lot of people for years come on, have Penny. been like, "You didn't think it, Penny? Come on, Penny. <laughs> you didn't age. You didn't age, you Penny, know, at all. In real I life, think- all animation." My- my voice hasn't changed at all. Literally, like somebody's like, do your kids listen to you? Because when you talk it, you don't sound like nobody's mama. You sound like a little cartoon <laughs> character. Like, first of all, yes, they do listen to me. Anyway, yeah. right, <laughs> no, right. but I never thought that. Um, I mean, you've been hearing different things here and there, and mm-hmm. so many things are getting rebooted and remade. And um, so, of course, I didn't, you know, think that it was, uh, I, I heard talks, but I didn't think it would be, a possibility and um then I got the call from Ralph Farquhar and Bruce Smith and they basically said they wanted to give it a go and I'm like hey like it, it can't it, ain't nobody else playing Penny so y'all we better figure this out <laughs> and um, that's right and yeah you know brought everybody along for the ride and it's been tough because um we actually started recording right before the uh, right when the pandemic was happening and so right. we had to start uh, recording everything at home mm-hmm. and um uh, it's difficult to record at home when you have kids that are not in school and they loud like they mama. So uh, we figuring this out though. We making it happen. <laughs> Don't mess with them checks. Don't mess with them checks. Come on now. I'm like, baby, just for a few minutes. No, they're trying to get a part in the show. That's what I know what they're trying to do. <laughs> now let's talk about this, this, this character, you know, when you talk about recording at home, you know, this is not picking up your phone or your cell phone recording at the home. Did they send you some right. special equipment? How did that work out? Oh, yes. We had to get the the right mics, um, the right uh, everything that needed to go into a computer. And I literally, when I tell you this computer thing, I, before this pandemic, I knew how to answer my email. Right. And uh, I knew how to <laughs> write a quick message. <laughs> but as far as anything else, no. Uh, so mm. I've learned so much. Um, I had to learn different tools and how to record myself and and uh, even having, I don't even know the name of the things that they sent. Like I had to, a bounce thing that I had to put behind the microphone and I had mm-hmm. to put, I, I, uh, I went to visit my grandmother. I had to put pillows on top of it to make sure that the sound was, the sound quality was good. Mm-hmm. Like they sent us so much stuff and I'm like, mm. luckily my man is a, a, he's a recording artist. So mm-hmm. he knows how to hook up all that stuff. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I don't have to um, cry today. Uh, so <laughs> uh, luckily I had the help that I needed, but yeah, they sent us everything. Well, well, you know, well, you know, you had to learn sometimes. And so the thing about right. it is that when you get a, get an opportunity, so, you know, I looked at, uh, uh, this is Disney Plus, where I just saw Soul, that Jamie Foxx uh, animated, mm-hmm. which is really great. It's, I've seen it twice. It's Love really it. fun. And then I hear about this announcement of, you know, the return. I'm going to just call it the return of Penny Proud, you know, the <laughs> Proud family, louder and prouder. So when I hear louder and prouder, I hear volume. I hear they will be they're gonna be all over the place. But we know you're on Disney Plus, so you're not gonna get extreme. What does louder and prouder mean? Uh, to me, louder and prouder. I feel like when I was recording the Proud Family back in the day, I had no idea what I was a part of. I was 14 years old, and I didn't realize the things that we were talking about and the messages that we were giving young kids watching um, watching the cartoon. And I feel like louder and prouder now it's like we it's like proud family 2.0 we basically upgraded the conversations that are going to be happening and mm-hmm. i'm surprised at some of the things that you know disney plus is uh, is allowing us to do but you know right. it, we have to do those type of things if we want to maintain the authenticity of being the proud family we have to come through with the messages we have to come through with the knowledge we have to come through with the real things that need to be said and need to be taught and learned about, especially in our community. So I just feel like there's a lot of different storylines that people are going to be like, 
what? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, they, it's, it's teach them young. Teach them young. Well, you know, the you interesting know? thing about your career, because I've, I've been fortunate to watch your career. You know, I've been fortunate to be on set with you and watch the professionalism, watch watch how you at a young age and and, and, and as a young teenager and become a young adult. That's longevity. And, you know, you have people who want to get in the business. Uh, can you give them any advice or any thoughts to the process of what this business can offer, offer you? for opportunity, but what you have to give or sacrifice to be successful in this business? Uh, this business is a very difficult one. Um, I, I always tell people, please only get involved if it's something that you have love for, that you love um, fame and all that popular stuff. And that doesn't mm -hmm. really, it's too much going on to just want that. Um, and then also it's, it's practice, it's studying, it's, taking it seriously it's 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 a very difficult it's like it's mentally it can be completely draining and i know a lot of people look at me and they're like oh you're you know you you turned out so well and and i say you know that's because i was able to recognize when things were too much for me um or mm -hmm. when i needed to just change how i looked at things mentally like in this business you're going to be told no a million times and it's going to make you question yourself. It's going to make you rethink everything that you know about you. And you have to get stuck in your head that, Hey, I'm going to keep getting told no, but that doesn't mean that I'm not good. That doesn't mean that I'm not worth it. It just means that that one thing wasn't meant for me. And now I'm on the hunt for the next thing. And uh, I know someone asked me recently, like, what did you audition for that you didn't get? And it took me like 10 minutes to think about it because I was like honestly <laughs> after I audition for something if I haven't heard back oh no it's out of it's mm -hmm. it's it's gone and I'm <laughs> on to the next thing I can't dwell on the past you know mm -hmm. so if you want to get into a business like this you just got to make sure here is is straight because a lot of people don't understand that you know we're human beings we're not machines and we go through the same things that everybody else goes through and if you want to do it just keep hustling and fighting and people are gonna tell you you can't just like anything else you got to prove them wrong well, you, well, let me tell you something. I'm proud of you. Penny proud. Okay. And uh, I've seen, I've seen the journey and I know, you know, there's so many, there's so many casualties out there. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and it's sad by that process because it's really, you can be famous on a series and then all of a sudden you constantly chasing that, that series or that moment or that opportunity. And like yeah. you said, you have to actually walk away. You have to shut down and don't let these negatives win. And if you let the negatives win, I think that's when it, that's when you don't have. But you've always had a balanced life. And I always tell people on the show that it's important to have a balanced life, that you are not consumed by what you do, but who you are. And you've always had that as part of your mantra. Tell, can you tell us about that, Penny? Not Penny, excuse me. Carla. Carla. I've, <laughs> I've always um, I've always wanted to have it all. And mm -hmm. um I remember being younger and people were like don't have kids yet. And I'm like, first of all, right. I do what I want to do. <laughs> um, but I just feel like you have to have balance. I understand that what I do for a living is my job and I love it. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do something that I love. Right. Um, but it is not my complete entire life. Um, I am a regular person with an extraordinary job. And um, it's difficult, especially in a business like this, because you like you said, you have those moments where you yes. have the TV shows and you're on top. And then the next thing you know, uh, people are looking at you like you've never worked before. And you're like, yes. wait, what? Like I've been <laughs> mm -hmm. hustling and I've been doing X, Y and Z. And <laughs> and what do you mean? And you kind of just have to. I, like I said, it's all it's all about your mental and and understanding. Like I, I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, mommy has always wanted to be a mommy, and mommy has mm -hmm. always wanted to be an actress. So, mommy has to juggle both. If mommy's tired, so what? Mommy got to uh, figure out when to get her <laughs> nap in, or you know, yeah. like just continue to you know fight for your dreams and what you want to do. But also recognize that you know one thing in your life is not everything. You have to have, uh, you know. I, I love you from a standpoint of who you are, the the brand you presented yourself. You're a beautiful woman, beautiful mom, beautiful wife. Uh, she stars in the new series on Fox every Thursday. Call me cat. But see, I'm always love her because my boy Ralph Farquhar, that's my boy. You know, yes. and, and Bruce over there, the the Penny Proud, the pretty the, the return 
Oh, Penny Proud. Okay, so you know, you know Ralph coming with it. You know Ralph, if they ain't playing no games, if we coming back, we coming back hard. <laughs> well, my friend, uh, again, uh, continue to grow, continue to grow on social media, continue to be the brand. I want to thank you for taking the time to come on Money Making Conversations. And I, I, I enjoyed the series. And if you happen to turn on the show and she's on the screen with Leslie Jordan, no, she has not grown. Leslie is just the shortest <laughs> man on national TV. <laughs> and, I, and I probably have on heels. I have yes, on heels. Oh, I'm not heels. Much I'll, tell than I'll tell you something. You got it going on. You know, I know you're mad there. You got all these kids going on. Okay. But you got it going on, sister girl, with the heels and everything. And you, I'm COVID trying, you. okay? <laughs> Bye-bye, Carla. We win, okay? Thank you, you so much. Money. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You want to hear more Money Making Conversation interviews, please go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I am your host.